This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. The Nevada Democratic caucuses were held on February 22nd, and it looks as if the Democratic Party is really starting to feel the burn. Nothing is certain yet due to slow reporting, but Bernie Sanders is in the lead with half of the precincts in. Over on the GOP side of things, the results are, well, non-existent. Nevada is one of the handful of states who decided to forego the primary process and award their delegates to the presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. In either case, there's enough there to be worthy of some roasted opinions. Let's start with the Nevada GOP, if only to give the Nevada Dems a little longer to figure out how to use their reporting app. Last September, the Nevada GOP voted to cancel their caucus. This isn't a new phenomenon, folks, nor is it limited to just the GOP. In the last several bids for re-election, the incumbents have enjoyed several states bypassing the expense of a primary and presumptively awarding their delegates to the incumbent. President Obama won 10 states without a primary, as did President Bush before him and President Clinton before him. Now, I understand that by canceling the primary and pledging delegates to the incumbent, a lot of dollars can be redirected to the campaign efforts within that state, including the efforts on down-ticket candidates. Nevada has four representative seats up for election, as well as numerous other state offices and money not spent on caucusing can be spent on election efforts in support of the Republican candidates for those offices. Having said that, I really don't like the thought that any state party should cancel their primary voting. It may not affect eventual results even a tiny bit, but it's still not a good idea for any candidate to not face the voters at this stage. Candidates need to know what their supporters are thinking about in each state, and they need to know what level of support they can expect from each state. The ultimate poll in each state is the one that's held at the voting booth, and canceling that poll is counterproductive in the long run, even in a primary which is effectively uncontested. Besides, campaigning for the primary vote is simultaneously campaigning for the general election. Now back to the Democratic Caucus. The Democratic National Committee published new rules on caucus reporting, requiring that the results of the first and final votes, along with the calculated delegate tallies, be reported. When those rules were adopted, that laid the groundwork for the reporting issues which the Democratic caucus states have experienced so far. This was further developed by the usage of reporting applications which were not fully tested before the caucus happened. In fact, modifications to procedures were causing these apps to be recoded right up until the last minute and made a full test run on the applications virtually impossible. Hence the reporting issues, which Iowa and Nevada have both experienced to one degree or another. Still, with 50% in, we have a projected winner. Bernie Sanders has managed to appeal to Hispanic voters and win nearly 50% of the popular vote in Nevada. Joe Biden, who was projected to finish much stronger in Nevada due to its more diverse population, is in a distant second place. Pete Buttigieg isn't too far behind Biden either, although his bounce from Iowa and New Hampshire hasn't been much to celebrate since he's still flirting with the non-viability threshold of 15%. Elizabeth Warren, who so devastated Mike Bloomberg in the Nevada debate, is polling at just over 10% so far. Amy Klobuchar barely polled any support, but it was still more than Tom Steyer, who, like Mike Bloomberg, is spending a fortune on advertising to overcome the fact that he is a billionaire running against a frontrunner who condemns the very existence of billionaires. Meanwhile, Bernie is burning down the Democratic establishment with his Democratic Socialist views, and more and more people are feeling the burn. But why? Well, there's a political dynamic which has existed since politics began. The haves versus the have-nots. The haves want to keep what they have, and the have-nots want to have the things that they don't have. In the politics of the current year, that dynamic shows up in the Republican side as the America First movement. Concentrated efforts to build up the strength of the American economy so that people can earn more money coupled with tax cuts and reprioritize spending to allow them to keep more of what they earn. That plan benefits everyone, but the first and biggest benefits in trickle-down economic policy always go to the wealthiest people, 
because they spend more on consumer goods and services, invest more into companies, and hire people to work for them. On the Democratic side, this dynamic is showing up as a serious case of class envy. People who are struggling are more likely to resent those who are wealthy because those who are wealthy are just as concerned with making money as the rest of us are and more likely to be able to do it given their significantly higher amounts of disposable income. That's why candidates like Bernie are proposing measures to provide more benefits through the government like socialized national health care. It shifts the burden of paying for things like health care more onto the shoulders of the billionaire class. Now, I hate how much health care costs in the United States. I hate how much health insurance premiums have skyrocketed over these past few years. I hate that some pharmaceutical companies have decided that billing the absolute maximum that the market can bear for drugs to which they have exclusive manufacturing rights is a good idea. It's absolutely unconscionable what is happening with the costs of health care. But nationalizing health care? Um, no. Just no. Still, the trend is towards Bernie, and that looks to set up a general election contest between an old guy with a distinctive appearance, crazy hair, and a very vocal chorus of critics, and an older guy with a distinctive appearance, crazy hair, and a very vocal chorus of critics. If the Sanders campaign keeps on building momentum, we could have a really interesting general election contest ahead of us.